Today I have something very special to show you. I have figured out the math necessary to determine how strong your void switch will be based on the parameters that you use to generate it. Uh, as an example of this, I've got over here on the right, you can see it's got the estimated strength slash force of this particular switch at 129 grams. And it does take into account everything, like your um, magnet wall thickness and uh, everything, right? So let's, I've, I've magnet, magnified this text. Hopefully you can see it. If not, make it full screen. Uh, just to give you an example, so right here, this switch will be 129 grams of force, which is ridiculous. Uh, and it probably won't be quite that much because there is some tolerance in the um, stem for the magnet. Also, this calculation assumes you're using the same um, magnets for the body as you are for the stem, but you can mix and match. Uh, it's just, it's, I don't have a way to calculate that yet. <laughs> so let's try changing the magnet void to something like 0 0.3. And you can see the estimated grams of force calculation went up in that. And I actually have printed out some, and that is actually very accurate. <laughs> so I'm very confident in these values. Um, let's also plug this in here for like a, a cheap Chinese um, magnet. So I don't know if you guys know this, but if you order four by two millimeter magnets from like Ally Express, chances are they're going to be 1.7 or 1.8 millimeters. Um, I don't have support for like every possible magnet size in here. Uh, and if I do put something in here that's not supported, it'll just spit out an error. Well, I guess it doesn't show anything at all. <laughs> but let's do 1.7, 1.7. And you can see that's about uh, 76 grams of force. And this is what I'm using right now. And it's a little too strong. I was thinking about moving to um, 0 0.5 uh, magnet void, which is about 61 grams of force. <laughs> now let's change this to N52s. And by the way, the magnets I sent to uh, Kairosran 22 uh, used an older version of the switch design that didn't get quite as much strength out of the... Um, out of the switch than I can get now because the magnet is actually going to be flatter and in more alignment with the uh, magnet in the body and in the sheath here. So you get a little bit more strength out of it. So that's why this the values that he's got, his switches will be a little bit weaker than these, uh, just as an FYI. So let's change this to uh, 4x2 N52s. And let's see just how big it will get. <laughs> so you can get 190 grams of force out of your void switch if you want by putting the strongest magnets in there. And it actually, you know, if you could somehow get these, um, yeah, I don't have actually, I, don't, I haven't calculated the values for um, 4x3, but you can actually change the thickness of the magnet if you want. I've also got the 4x1s in there. So if you got some of those uh, thinner magnets and you wanted to shave off the height of your switch a little bit, you can do that. And you'll still be able to have um, plenty of um, grams of force to work with. So let's go with like 4x3. Look at that. So a 4 by having uh, thin magnets in your void switch with a magnet point of 0 0.3 gives you that like right around that ideal value of around 62 grams of force. Um, and you can, you know, you can't do fractional, but like I could do like three, five, but just know your 3d printer is probably not going to be able to get that accurate, um, of a result unless you're using a resin printer and you can go really, you know, weak as well. You can get it down to like 35 grams and that will still work for reference. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to show this off. I've even got weirder things in here, like um, N42. Yeah, see, so you got 28 grams. Um, I wonder what it, N42 is at. Yeah, look at that. N42. Look at that. That's a good value. 50 grams. If you can get your hands on N42s. I've got N45s in there. I've even got the... Um, I've got 3 millimeter mag... Uh, Three millimeter magnet support for uh, three by two and three by one by five for N thirty fives. Oh, I've got an error in there somewhere. But N fifty, let's try N fifty two. Nope, I messed it up somewhere. Let's go back to four because I know that works. There we go. So with N fifty two switches, I actually sent Kairos ran some one nines, and those were barely, you know, they were so easy to move. Those should have been probably around, like, they're a little bit weaker than this, so probably like 30. <laughs> yeah, so you can control the strength of your magnets now, and you don't actually have to print out 101, to, you know, switches to figure out precisely what the strength is going to be. This is actually, like I said, it's pretty damn accurate. Um, and do note, I don't know if you can see here, but the um, the height of your switch is going gonna, is gonna to increase a little bit based on your magnet void. So you can see that the amount of material on the stem here goes up 
So if I change this to 0.0, .0 again, you'll see it'll shrink. And the height of the switch goes down as well, right along with it. So just keep that in mind. Um, also note that when you using my plate generator, it actually you want to this, this is that's the reason why this says under plate height and it's big yellow output here. It's because the plate generator takes this value and generates the height of your plate based on the height of your switches. That's why it's like that. So yeah, everything that I've uh, created so far for the uh, risky board and the void switches and my numpads and macro pads and everything else, it takes the it takes everything into account when the uh, files are generated so that when you choose new parameters like this, the switch and the body and the plate and everything that you get along with it will accurately represent what it is that you've generated. Uh, but for reference, you can't just like go into the plate generator and give it an extra like millimeter of space and it won't matter that much. Uh, it'll still be able to read your switches. So that's nothing to worry about. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work on the, the uh, Risky Board PCB and I've also been working on a new numpad PCB. Uh, but I'll give updates to that later. Primary point here is that I do now have accurate, reasonably accurate switch strength estimation going on, and I think that's really cool.